We don't know when the idea of the triangle first entered the human mind, but this ancient papyrus manuscript tells us it was at least 3600 years ago. This fragile document is from ancient Egypt, and it shows that these people had a sophisticated understanding of the triangle. They used it to create dramatic and enduring structures. Centuries later, the ancient Greeks realized the potential of the triangle, using it as the core concept for a new branch of mathematics, trigonometry. The Greeks focused this new math on some seemingly unsolvable problems. How big is the earth? How far is the moon? The triangle answered both of these questions. These ancient philosophers had discovered some remarkable properties of the triangle. One important revelation was the property of similarity. They discovered that if two triangles have the same internal angles, they are similar. Even though they are different sizes, their corresponding sides have the same ratios. Here's what that means. These are two similar triangles. Their internal angles are the same, 37, 53, and 90 degrees. The small triangle has a base length of 4 centimeters. The other two sides are 3 and 5 centimeters. If I tell you that the base of the larger triangle is 8 centimeters, can you calculate how long the other two sides are? Here's how you do this. The base of the large triangle, 8 centimeters, is twice as long as the base of the small triangle at 4 centimeters. Because these are similar triangles, the other two sides of the large triangle must also be twice as long as the corresponding sides on the small triangle. This side will be 2 times 3, that's 6 centimeters. This side will be 2 times 5, or 10 centimeters. This is true for all similar triangles. The sides maintain the same ratios. It is possible to use this property to determine the height of any object. To do this, you need an inclinometer, a device designed to measure angles. You can create a simple inclinometer from a protractor, or construct one like this. For information on constructing and using an inclinometer, visit our inclinometer page. Here's how you use this device, along with the knowledge of triangles, to determine the height of a tree. Let's calculate the height of this spruce tree. We will start by assuming that this tree makes an angle of 90 degrees with the ground, and that the ground is level. These assumptions may be off a little, but not enough to seriously affect our calculation. We need a baseline, so I'll use a tape measure to determine a distant back from the tree. I have measured a base length of 15 meters. Our triangle looks like this. Now we need to determine the internal angles. We know one is 90 degrees. We will use the inconometer to determine another internal angle. We only need one more. I have attached the inclinometer to a block so I can sit it on the ground at the end of the baseline. A mirror helps when sighting the inclinometer close to the ground. When the top of the tree is visible through the straw, we will have the angle. This angle is 25 degrees. Because the sum of the three internal angles of any triangle is always 180 degrees, that means that the angle at the top of the tree is 65 degrees. We now have all the information we need to estimate the height of this tree. We have a large triangle with a base length of 15 meters and the two angles at the base are 25 and 90 degrees. We will determine the height of the tree by creating a similar triangle on paper using a scale of one centimeter to one meter. Instead of a 15 meter base, our small triangle will have a base of 15 centimeters. One centimeter equals one meter. Start by accurately drawing a 15 centimeter line on paper. We assume the tree makes an angle of 90 degrees with the base, so let's draw a line to represent the tree. Use a protractor to determine 90 degrees. We don't know how long this line is, so just extend it. We know that the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 25 degrees, so the next step is to use a protractor to locate and draw this angle. 
Extend this line to intersect with the line representing the tree. This point of intersection represents the top of the tree. To determine the height of the tree, measure the length of the line. The ruler tells us this line is 6.9 centimeters long. One centimeter represents one meter. This means that the tree is 6.9 meters high. To confirm this calculation, I used a long pole and tape measure to directly measure the height of the tree. With this method, I determined the height of the tree to be 7.1 meters, a difference of 20 centimeters, about 3%. Precision inclinometer and a level baseline would have improved results. If you have been studying trigonometry, you will know how to use trig functions or the Pythagorean relationship to determine the height of an object. Instructions for constructing an inclinometer can be found at our website, or view our video demonstrating the construction of an inclinometer. For more science and technology videos, visit our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the projects link.